My name is Baba Bertha and I'm here to introduce you to the awakening where the granddaughter takes you Oh, what's that flying at me? I'm always having things flying at me. Did you see that? Oh, that sign, it flew at me. Did you not see it? I didn't imagine it, did I? Anyway, uh, the granddaughter is here to take you from the dark into the light. That's what the awakening is. And I've got a nice uh, orange towel on today. She said it makes me more creative. So there you go. Anyway, enjoy the awakening. Do this. She wants me to tell you to do this and to click the bell underneath. Uh, I'm doing this because um, I want to put out the message like uh, Charlie Wood's little lad, Justin. I'm sorry if I'm not as, uh, as sweet as he is, but there you go. I'm doing my best. I'm Baba Berta and I'm the grandmother. And please enjoy my show as well. Baba Berta show coming today on uh, Moving On TV. Please subscribe, Moving On TV community. Oh, it's... it's guys welcome to the awakening um yeah it's interesting because i wasn't going to do an awakening today and it's i think it's 2 a.m in the morning so it's actually not today it's tomorrow <laughs> so to speak and i just did a massive interview with laura ward um about sex trafficking sra and all the things that we're going out to eradicate uh, with her marches that she's doing across the country. So I thought to myself, I've done my work now. I put Baba Burst on there for you to have a good laugh before I put the news flash on. I, I like to put some comedy as well before I put something really serious on. So before I put Laura's big interview on, um, I put Baba Burst on there for you to have a bit of a laugh. But um, so what do I want to talk about? I have to keep the continuity of the awakening because uh, the way I see it is I wanted to talk today about when you are coming across these things that are, for some of you, it may be new, uh, what I'm talking about, sex trafficking, SRA, or all the dreadful things that are coming up around kids and innocent people. Um, you may not know how to negotiate it. You may not know what to do with it. I mean, as I said, I just did a massive interview with Laura Ward um, about these things and how approximately 8 million children go missing a year in the whole world and how I was in so much shock about that number in particular. But who cares, you know, even if two children went missing and these things were happening to them. But this is just... It's like we live in hell. So I've known about this for a long time now, not the vastness of the numbers, but uh, that this practice is going on with at least a million kids going missing a year. Terrible practices that are going on. And, how do, and I've managed to cope with it, do my interviews, survive and move on. And so I think today I wanted to pass on to you a little bit of that knowledge is how come I'm calm? How come I, I, I'm dealing with it? And okay, so I want to take myself back to when I first found out about SRA and which is Satanistic ritual abuse and what's really happening to kids and how many kids are going missing and the whole thing, which we can't deny anymore because people are going on the streets protesting. You've got to understand that this is all true. This is not conspiracy theories. This is all true. And you need to really wake up. Um, so I can't put your foot around it because it's such a terrible subject that we need to end it now, end of. So what I was going to say is I'm going to take myself back to New Year's Eve 2015, I think it was, when I came out of the wheelchair. No, sorry, 2016 or... 2016, I'd been in a wheelchair after my father died in August, from August to more or less the end of the year. And I remember I was on crutches and I went to a New Year's Eve party with uh, people that were meditators. And, and there was a person there and I told her about how I felt because I was starting to understand. I was starting to get red pills and 
I was in shock and I thought I, I couldn't grasp it. And she said to me, oh, you're just waking up. You're just waking up. Now, I'd say that when this happened, as I said, years and years ago, uh, we still had the, um, the luxury of waking up slowly, but we don't have that anymore. We have to end it now. And everything that's happened is giving you the red light to understand that all the cover-ups about the kids and pedophilia and what's really going on needs to be ended now. So how did I deal with it? I cried a lot. Um, I, I just cried and cried and I couldn't get enough of it because deep down inside I knew something wasn't right and I had to keep watching and watching these programs. And uh, at some point, as I say, it was obvious to me. And then I started to go out and do the work. I tried to do the work. I remember going around to friends and trying to tell them and they blanked me, particularly um, people that didn't want to know. Uh, they just blanked you. They no, I don't want to talk about that. And I thought, well, okay, we'll leave it. But um, as I say, I did my best to get the messages out through Facebook, to start to send stuff around to, to a lot of you before the lockdown. For years I did that. And um, that's all I could do until I took back my power. And when the lockdown started, and particularly 93 days ago, because this is the awakening 92, I think, when uh, I decided to go back to meeting on TV and to tell the truth in every way, shape, or form I could. As someone said the other night, uh, I'm dripping the truth to you through moving on TV by using also comedy and mind, body, spirit stuff, but mainly to give you the real facts of what's really going on that the media won't touch. And we know why, because they're all part of it. So today I wanted to come on here and explain to you how after doing a very, very deep, intense, upsetting interview with Laura Ward from uh, Save the Children, oh, sorry, Save the Children, Freedom for Children UK, who's do, done a big interview with me, which will go out in the next few days. Um, how I was, as usual, very, very low afterwards, gutted, because I'm facing it again. And then I thought, well, I made sure I had a good meal. That's very important. And then I thought, I'll do some comedy. So I sat there and I watched Boba Bertha and I laughed and I hope she makes you laugh. And it lightened the load and then I'm ready to go again. So what I'd say you need to do, because it's so difficult. I mean, there's a lot of personal things going on in my life at the moment with the family, my husband's family. I don't want to talk about that too much, but we, I have to stay calm and balanced and do my work while this is going on and uh, give my husband the love and attention he needs while making sure that I have a laugh. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Boba Bertha makes me laugh. And I think she makes a lot of people that know what she's talking about laugh. If you don't understand what's really going on, it's going to be hard for you to understand what Boba Bertha is actually talking about. But she talks about what's going on and she has her own way of trying to figure it out. So comedy, whatever comedy you can watch, have a laugh, guys. And whether it's on moving on TV, there is a lot of comedy on there. There's a huge playlist of comedy I did years ago with talk shows and you know it's all sorts of stuff, silly stuff. Um, but what I'm asking you to do is to find ways, make lists of all the things you can do to switch yourself off. Don't watch the news, please. Just watch a tiny bit if you have to. But as I'm saying, because, you know, you have to be careful. It never leaves you. The gut-wrenching pain because you're empaths like me and we know what's going on. And so my interviews are getting more and more serious. At some point, I'm going to be interviewing Jeanette Archer. And she's going to go into the nitty gritty of SRA. I was watching a program last night, 60 Minutes Australia, which was released about, looked like 10 or 15 years ago, maybe more, because it was a very small screen and it's still going on. 
about a girl who was kept stayed with her grandmother. The grandmother was arrested because they proved what the child was saying, because uh, it does happen, but we didn't realize to what scale it's happening, on what scale it's actually happening. So as I say, all of this is in front of us, all of the facts, and more and more they're going to come up on my stations, on YouTube. You won't be able to run away from them soon because they will be on MSM, they will be on the mainstream. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. So you need to prepare yourself. People get back to me and say, oh, I can't watch it anymore because it's not about mental health. And I'm saying to you, if you want to stay sane, take the red pill bit by bit. I'm sorry, but it's all true. It's all true. There are no conspiracy theories, particularly about what they're doing to children. So in order to survive now and to get through, if you want to, and if you can, uh, stay balanced, make sure you eat, do the uh, what I'm teaching you and how to stay sane in the crazy world. Don't get too hungry, don't get too angry, too lonely or too tired. And um, I had a big day yesterday, or it was the day before now, I had a really shocking day um, where our front door broke uh, and then the wind was so strong that it smashed the glass on the door from the inside, which meant that the cats, I was terrified that the cats were gonna hurt themselves. Um, and the estate agent didn't want to, they basically said, what do you want me to do? That's what they said, um, which was ridiculous. My husband was taking care of his family, his parents, which again, I don't wanna go into, and I can only send love and blessings to my in-laws at the moment, lots of love and healing to my in-laws at the moment. That's all I can say. But uh, so there was no one here. And I was running around trying to make sure the cats weren't going to get hurt by the glass. The estate agent turned up with a mask and I kind of looked at her and I thought, I, I can't be bothered. Just leave it, Lauren, just carry on. I did. And uh, it was very, very difficult for me because as I say, my husband was, was dealing with much really serious stuff. But I went into shock. All the glass fell out of that window, the door, and my friend came over. Thank God someone came over who I friended and who doesn't live too far from me. Thank God came over to hold me as I was crying so much because I couldn't find my husband. He wasn't answering the phone, yada, yada, and I was in a lot of terror. My house had become a frightening place to be, my, my home. Uh, because of the glass, because of the door that was wide open, there was no front door to shut, and the wind, and it, it was just absolutely terrifying. But I got through it. Um, I got through it, thanks to my beautiful friend. And when my husband came back, he was able to hold me and, you know, and to explain to me what's really going on, why he wasn't here. And so my compassion took over for him. And I was able to cope and I got back on to moving on TV. I could not work at all. And that's why the awakening is a day late. I couldn't work, I couldn't eat, and I went into shock. And so what I had to do is I had to do the, don't get, make sure you eat the hungry thing I ate. The angry, I was able to release my anger with crying, screaming. I really did let it out. It was like I was possessed with so much fear and shock about everything that was going on in the world and everything in my own home and also with my family, my husband's family. It's just too much. And I was screaming because, as I say, I couldn't get him until he got back, I, I couldn't get him. And so I felt, some, I felt really, really scared for what was going on yesterday. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I did the whole thing. I made sure I wasn't too lonely. My friend came over and too tired. And um, I watched Laurie Ladd and I fell asleep on the couch. And then I went to bed. And when I got up in the morning, my husband said to me that he was going to stay with me today. And he did. And we went to the allotment. And I just sat there thinking about the big interview I'm going to do with Laura tonight and to steal myself and just sat there meditating a little bit, relaxing with my husband. 
and just thinking how grateful we are to have our allotment. Looking at the plants, laughing at how big they're getting and you know the, the population over overload of our retreats. And that was it. I was it. And then I came home and did my work. And so that's all you can do. So you have to take time out, you have to breathe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um how to say same in the place of world for you. God, I wish I could learn how to do. You know, when I watch the tarot readers, all these tech, they know how to shuffle these cards. And I'm trying to learn how they do it. They just let go of one at one at a time, I think, and they mix them up. <laughs> They mix them up, but they do it so fast. They <laughs> all I can do is try and do it the best way I can, and then do what I do. They they lift them up. <laughs> they lift them up, and then you hit the noise goes. <sighs> I can't do it, and then they put them together. I'll have to watch them learn, and then they shuffle. So I had to stay sane in the crazy world. We're going to do one today, which um, I channeled, and you can get the cards off of me, or off of the Positivity Centre in Nashton Lane. And there's two cards that fell out, and I'm going to read them both to you. How to stay sane in a crazy world, okay, to help you get through. One is upside down. Sit with it, so you need to sit with it, you need to really feel your feelings. And I did say that about helplessness because I wanted to start some helplessness trainings on the 17th of August. Today, I will give myself a chance to sit with my helplessness, my fear, my pain, my anger. I will not combust from this and I may actually find inner peace or I'll choose another God. Sit with it. So anyone who's experiencing a lot of anxiety, turn the TV off for God's sake and sit with it. If it can't combust you, you might want to scream and cry and let it all out, but do that in increments and then help someone. Because when you put your attention onto another human being, you will feel that your anxiety will go down a bit. I'm not saying don't focus on yourself, you must. But, you know, in increments, help someone. Today, if I need to focus, if I focus too much on myself, I will focus on someone else and give them some compassion. Okay, today I will be kind to someone, help someone. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to say today. Uh, or did I? <laughs> because when I get with you guys, I feel like I want to do some tarot with you. I don't know why, but just something to give you some more hope for the coming days all of you the awakening becomes a mishmash of everything a mishmash <laughs> so again i'm going to try and do the um what they do so you let go one at a time i fix them all in do another one there we go looks like a little bit better Uh, I'm going to get a few cards for you because I love you guys so much. I love you guys. Please subscribe, share, and like. I hope you like my new subscribe thing, which um, there's oh, I'll put that out there. Um, but I'm asking spirit to give us some answers. I don't want the problems, I want the solutions here. Okay, so some solutions, spirit. But whoever is watching the awakening today, can we have some solutions to help them in some way? Thank you, Spirit. Right, we've got that one. And we've got that one. Okay. And we'll turn this one around. We have got that one. Okay. So as I say, I want solutions. Okay not problems. So I'm not going to look at the cards upside down. I'm going to look at them the right way up. Now we have got the ending, transformation, death. We have the star. So make your wishes and go out. 
because every what's ended is ended. We have got the King of Pentacles, so time to go out there and get your abundance and what you deserve. We have got the King of Cups, beautiful emotional balance, guys. Isn't that lovely? You need emotional balance. We have the Five of Swords. So um, stand up for what you believe in. We have the Nine of Swords, which is worry. Okay, so I know some of you are worrying, but I, let's say it's coming to an end. Okay, because you've got the other ones that come coming to an end. And in order for that to come to an end, I'm telling you, you've got the Wheel of Fortune. So karma is coming to an end. So if I look at all these cards for you, as I say, solutions to how to help you negotiate the next couple of weeks, months, until we see a little bit more of what we want to see from our world, because everything is collapsing. Okay, so the good thing was we have transformation, so it's finished. The old world is finished. Okay, you, can, you have your wish will come true, wishing on the star because we have two beautiful cards here. We have the King of Cups, so you need to have a lot of emotional balance, sensitivity, you know, coming together in emotional balance and sensitivity and love and compassion for yourself and others, and the King of Pentacles. You will be getting the Star and the Star at some point, but we have to jump through some hoops first, standing up for what we believe in, okay? Ending the old world, death, finish, gone, walking away, letting that that is finished to go, to leave us. And of course, Wheel of Fortune is going to come full circle. Okay, so I hope that helps you. I'm not doing a full tarot reading here. No, I do love my tarot, absolutely love it. And I, want, I might do one in another Zoom because I'm enjoying myself now. I love you. Please subscribe, share and like. Come on board Moving On TV. If you feel that you can donate something, that would be really good. I'd be so grateful. See, I'm doing what I love here. I love it. I love shuffling. It relaxes me. I love shuffling cards. But it not only does it relax me, it calms the brain, I think. It's a bit like coloring in, which is something that calms you down. Because there's so much coming up. I'm not going to pretend there isn't. This is a very, very difficult time for some of you. I don't want to know the truth or look at it because it will be in your face. You won't have any choice soon. So as I say, if you can donate something, I'd be very, very happy to accept the donation from you. I love you lots. Take care and please join Moving On TV. Bye-bye.